what is the guntur is asking a very good question what is the phosphate level in nutritional and renal failure rickets ha huh? renal failure rickets is uh, always phosphate is high nutritional rickets may phosphate is low vaishal is already answering right our students and themselves are now champions peer review it is called huh? the uh, another one week it will take uh, newsformedico.com is what uh, we have uh, started you start contributing some articles we will put all notes as a blog post and we will post it directly to your facebooks also uh, and you can share it with your friends also like that so some nice interesting questions everything will be post like a blog nowadays people share on whatsapp and facebook but uh, uh, that's a good method but unless you are in that group you can't web is like open for all web interface is open for all so that's the reason we are trying to build a, a open web space called news for medico where we um, we put a lot of content into that and you also can contribute okay <clears throat> fracture through the surgical neck of humerus commonly what is the who is the typical patient for this elderly women elderly women elderly women let me tell you doctor <clears throat> if they develop an episode of a lacunar stroke in the brain spasticity will develop the son who returned from dubai will say मा मेरे पास मां है घर है सब कुछ है हा? तो मां तेरे लिए एक नया घर बनाया मैंने द फ्लोर इज टू स्लिपरी विथ जयपुर मार्बल एंड द मदर विथ अ स्पास्टिक गाइट हैज डिड इनॉग्रेशन एंड एंटर्ड होम एंड बिग्गेस्ट ट्रबल इज शी फेल डाउन एंड हैड ए पेल्विक फ्रैक्चर surgical neck of humerus fracture after that bedridden bed sores and passed away so toxic love of the sun so while planning home or you need to advise the patients especially geriatric care such minute things you must talk to the patients how is the floor aapke ghar mein how is your bathroom ka banda kaisa hai all those things you should talk doctor then only you are a loving and caring doctor not by virtue of whether you did in aims or whether you did in usmania wo sab nahi hota ha eh? you must think that you are a family member of them and uh, think their situation now in majority of these cases whenever fracture of the surgical neck of humerus occur it's an impacted fracture not a displaced fracture that is very important and uh, there is a reason any elderly person who says pain is there pain is there pain is there don't leave it like that evaluate there could be a unreported trauma fall which has led to development of a simple slipping in the night on the bed also can cause osteoporotic bone may a fracture of the surgical neck of humerus so you should evaluate for a impacted fractured neck of humerus so now let us see this is a humeral head shaft of the humerus so here there is a fracture but it is still not displaced it is called impacted fracture of the humerus is what need to be remembered near classification of the humerus fracture basically he divided the upper end of the humer into four important parts shaft of the humerus head of the humerus greater tuberosity and lesser tuberosity so accordingly how many of these parts are involved in the fracture he has divided the fractures into one part two part three part four part that is the near classification at least that eponymous name near don't forget so this is an example of a one part surgical neck and greater tuberosity fracture this is called two part surgical neck fracture so how many parts are involved in the fracture makes it 
Similarly, here there is a fracture involving lesser trochanter, two part lesser tuberosity fracture. So, how do you basically treat the surgical neck of humerus fracture? You put a triangular sling, immobilize the shoulder. Simple way. Then, uh, if it is an elderly patient, most of the time immobilization itself is sufficient because most of the times their fractures are all impacted fractures. Suppose the fracture is widely displaced, you need to reduce it under by manipulation and uh, once reduced, you need to stabilize it by multiple K wires which are passed percutaneously. That is the management of displaced refracture of the surgical neck of humerus. So, this is a typical fracture. You need to do reduction of the fracture neck of humerus. Right? So, you must know after the fracture, what are the forces pulling the distal fragment? Generally, they are adducting it and then pulling it down. So, there is a reason to reduce what you need to do. Abduct it and then pull it up. That is what you need to basically do. Right? Then, this is a preoperative AP view of an unstable fracture neck of the humerus which is showing comminution. And this is the postoperative view where it got reduced. And what have you applied? You have applied the percutaneous uh, nails, wires, screws, whatever you want to apply to maintain the stability. That's the point. So, this is called rush pin basically. Now, this rush pin is passed through the greater tuberosity and then the fracture is being stabilized and maintained. That is what you need to basically do. And suppose if it is not displaced in the impacted state only, then you can use figure of 8 type of a bandage and can be able to maintain the stability, immobilization. And that is what you need to basically do. This is called coaptation splint, this is called as. Once more splinting purpose is what? Immobilization. After the, if it is a impacted fracture, that is what you need to basically do. Now, this is another example of running the pins and uh, nails in order to maintain the uh, uh, impaction. Now, doctor, what are the complications of uh, the fractured neck of humerus, surgical neck of humerus? Axillary nerve is the one which can get injured because of the demobilization. Shoulder can develop stiffness. But a good number of times physiotherapy exercises bath may correct over shoulder fitness, stiffness also will resolve. So, this is a uh, comminuted fracture of the surgical neck of humerus which is being bridged by the percutaneous pins once more. That is the story of surgical neck. Then comes the greater tuberosity, the fracture of it. Once more fall on the shoulder will cause this fracture in the adults and it is generally undisplaced and comminuted. And uh, um, sometimes if you take greater tuberosity, SITS, four muscles attach, shoulder cuff muscles. What are they? Supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor and subscapularis. One more S is there, check. Lesser uh, for SITS, no? Yes, see, subcaps. Yes, my last S is one. Subscapular is uh, Achilles proposing uh, a newer attachment of, of late uh, human beings. Uh, huh? Okay. Supraspinators can pull that broken out greater trochanter and can lead to displacement. That is the point. So, this is an example of a non-displaced greater tuberosity fracture and uh, uh, this is how you basically uh, do the uh, replacement of that, uh, I mean stabilize the uh, uh, tuberosity which is being detached by the pull of the supraspinatus, that is what uh, can basically happen. So, how do you treat? Suppose it is minimally displaced, comminuted fracture, triangular sling. And you need to immobilize the shoulder. Suppose if it is a displaced one, you basically reduce it. So, how will you reduce it? You, if you hold the shoulder in a abducted position in a plaster cast, okay, 
then uh, that will be see you have abducted and uh, that displaced uh, uh, tuberosity will come and sit in the place and you apply the cast in abducted position like this patient should go because his gravity tuberosity got fractured right then otherwise you need to do open reduction and internal fixation then what are the complications because for the shoulder cuff you require supraspinal disc tuberosity they are all important there will be a painful arc syndrome if the patient is swimming then painful arc syndrome and there is a development of shoulder stiffness then comes the fracture of the shaft of the humerus so what lead to the shaft of the humerus any twisting or a bending if you are reading Harrison Nelson pharmacology may have a good one what is that not gentleman what is goodman gilman all men you put in sons and men if you put it in your hand and then going and your friend crashed you in the reading room right so that can lead to twisting bending force so any fall on the outstretched hand also can cause the fracture of the shaft of the humerus now how is the shaft the deltoid muscle basically attaches to the deltoid tuberosity on the anterolateral surface proximal to the middle third and the posterior surface of the humerus is crossed obliquely by the radial nerve so why this deltoid insertion need to be known because if you want to know how the distal and proximal fragment after the fracture got displaced you must know whether the fracture is happening in which part of the shaft if it is involving lower part of the shaft then radial is gone if it is somewhere in the middle of the shaft then the delta it is strong force will pull the proximal fragment and make the displacement so this is all the important reasons you need to know so this is a classical case of a patient who had a malunion of a fracture shaft of the humerus so this is how you can see the displacement which has happened the proximal and distal fragments of the fracture of the humerus this is another example of a little more proximal point fracture of the shaft of the humerus so what is the if you look at the humerus humerus has lot of muscles surrounding it what is the importance of those so many muscles being surrounded good or bad sometimes good compound fractures incidence is very low if you take tibia tibia is very subcutaneous in location thoda injury ho gaya to tibia is immediately visible and exposed so infection can go compound fractures are very high in subcutaneous bone fracture like tibia but not in humerus then the union of the bone sucker very early because vascularity is very well lot of periosteal blood supply is available due to all this muscle surrounding it and even if little malunion is there you can go to gym do exercise and your deltoid will cover up that malunion unless uh, the girl who is marrying is a radiologist uh, or a clinician she will check all points and check whether there is any bony malunion and then reject you still your chance of getting married are very very high uh, so be very sure then lateral angulation is very common after the fracture why because the proximal segment is there no the deltoid will cause a strong lateral pull due to which whenever the two fragments are attaching distal and proximal lateral angulation is very very common then uh, uh, with a fracture of the humerus um, there is a tendency for the patients to keep the limb by the side of their chest and uh, that will result in the distal fragment to get adducted and that is the reason also lateral angulation is very very common malunions and uh, lot of times what is the cause of uh, the two fragments getting separated from each other it is the lower fragment gravitational pull is the one which is basically 
responsible. Then, if the radial nerve get injured because the fracture in the distal one bed, wrist to drop, extensor paralysis is very common. So, how do you treat ductal? Fracture of the shaft of the humerus may non union ka dikkat nahi hai, mal union ka dikkat hai. So, the union is easy and uh, uh, fracture of the shaft of the humerus may some amount of mal union and angulation is common, but still it will not cause any mechanical problem. Why? Because uh, if you take the shoulder joint, it is a multi-axial joint. So that is the reason uh, any amount of abnormal union happens also. The shoulder can be able to compensate because of its multi-axial movement. Hence little displacement, you won't go and once more uh, smoothen it and then uh, rejoin. Wo carpentry ka kaam ka jarvet nahi padega. That is the point. And some amount of shortening is there. Legs may, lower limb may shortening is noticeable. Upper limb shortening is not big deal. And uh, lot of bone, muscles are there overlying the bone. So that malunited bone goes unnoticed. That is the point. Now, some, some locations may strict immobilization is necessary, you know. In case of the surgical neck of humerus, I mean shaft of humerus, strict immobilization is not really necessary. Just if you conservatively manage, that's more than enough. So you will apply what is called as a U slab. Right? So a plaster slab which will extend all the way from the neck and extends up to um, uh, extends up to the elbow, to the medial side of the arm. So that is what you will apply called U slab, is uh, what you will basically apply. Around 6 to 8 weeks later, you will remove the slab. That is what you will basically do. And after that, what should patient should do? He should do, do exercising and physiotherapy to prevent the development of the shoulder stiffness. And similarly, exercising of the elbow. That is what he need to basically do. So, what is the complication which can occur more often? Malunion rather than non-union is what need to be remembered. Now, this is an example of a humeral fracture brace in order to create more amount of, less amount of immobilization, I mean less amount of mobilization. Then this is called as hanging cast, especially in case of the lower part of the fractures. The weight of the limb and the cast is supposed to provide the sufficient traction in order to keep the fracture in alignment. That is called as hanging cast. Where will you use means? Fracture of the shaft of the humerus. So, this is the chest arm bandage. Basically, this is the one which is strapped against the chest and whenever the child is less than 5 years with a fracture of the humerus, then we will basically use uh, uh, the chest arm bandage. Now, what is the operative management that we will basically do? So, since humerus is a long bone, you can use intermediary nailing for internal fixation and uh, Suppose if it is a very contaminated uh, fracture, then internally into the medullary cavity, if you drive the nail, infection chances high hota hai. So whenever complex compound fracture, generally compound fractures are less likely, but if compound fracture is there, then external fixator is what you have to basically place. So what are the complications of the fracture of the shaft of the humerus? A very important injury is the injury of the radial nerve, but generally it is a neuropraxia. Most of the times it will recover spontaneously. And suppose if it is an open fracture, all bony fragments are visible to you. Right? Then you need to do the exploration. And suppose if the wrist drop is severe, then you need to do extensor tendon transfers. You want to restore the uh, extension. So that is what you need to basically do. And one such procedure where radial nerve injuries may extensor mechanism is restored is called Modified Jones transfer is what uh, you need to basically remember. So, what will you do in modified Jones transfer? Radial nerve is injured, but the medial nerve and Allah nerve supplied muscles of the forearm are there, no? They are intact. So, you will use those muscles and repose in the place where 
extensor muscles normally have an insertion so that through their contraction extensor mechanism once more restores which is called modified jones transfer so one of the favorite mcqs asked in the exam about the modified jones transfer is extensor carpi radial is brevis supplied by radial nerve is reposed by pronita teres so like sir digitorum by flexor carpi ulnaris extensor pollis is longest by palmar is longest that is what you will do in the case of the modified jones transfer is what you need to basically remember then can there be mal union is an issue delayed union and non union can be occur generally less common but uh, if there is a transverse fracture in the mid shaft then that can suffer a delayed or a non union in the case of the humerus shaft fractures so how will you treat that open reduction internal fixation with the bone grafting is what you will basically do for which you will take a fibular bone for the grafting that is what uh, basically uh, you will do in order to manage a situation of uh, non union so that is all the story doctor about humerus fractures at least seven eight main points we have discussed to two extensively